So we have been talking for quite a while about building a cow stable or um, cow shelter. Um, we have been putting it on and off. One factor of us not building one last year was also just because we didn't know um, how this whole thing would turn out with the mining on the farm. I know a lot of people have asked how that is going, if we will lose our farm or not. I'm going to make a video about this tomorrow, so tune in tomorrow and I will give you guys an update um, on the whole mining thing and for those of you who don't know I'll explain a little bit. But uh, we've been thinking for quite a while about building a cow shelter. Now when you build a cow stable or a cow shelter there are a few things you want to think about. I'm just going to walk you through this um, a little bit and then um, explain what those things are and why you have to think about them. Now here, this is the back side um, of the old cow stable that was built originally on the farm. They used to have, I don't know, five to ten milk cows or something and the hay used to be on top. There is a opening inside where you put the hay through to the downstairs. Um, fairly old right now. We have it as chicken stable. But we are actually thinking of adding um, a roof put it out here and then um, having the cows walk here. We can see I've started to mop graze again. The uh, cattle is right here behind me. The calves, they still can go under this one wire that we have. Um, everybody's commenting on our wire, not, not just you guys on YouTube, but even people that come. Wow, what a thin fence, what a tiny fence for, for cattle. and. You know, the, the thing is really, um, if I had three of these wires, or four of these wires, or if this wire was made out of um, aluminum or steel, it wouldn't really make a difference. Th these cows could just run through any of that, so, so either you have to decide whether you want a um, physical barrier or you want a psychological barrier, which this line is a psychological barrier, so it really doesn't matter, and one is just fine. We don't care if the calves walk under. Anyway, we have done daily moves. Um, a lot of this grass has dried out. It's fairly tall still because um, of the pasture management. We still have a bunch of grass, but they will trample a lot of this down now. It has started to dry out. Um, it'll mulch the ground. Um, we really, really hope for rain. We have gotten um, a little bit of rain um, the last couple weeks, but it was so little. It just um, it went like less than a centimeter into the ground, you know, and, and it just steamed away pretty much. We would need like a week of rain and then it'll grow back more. So um, they trample down a lot of it and they just eat what they think is yummy and what they need right now. There are a bunch of things that you want to think about. If you become part of a certain program, um, it's called Ranch Drift Program here in Sweden, um, it is very expensive, especially for small cattle farmers. But if you become part of that, you are actually allowed, um, if you have enough natural shelter for them, bushes, trees, shrub, you are allowed to keep these cattle out year long. But this breed is especially good for that. But the reason why we don't want to do that is because you would just, during that time, spread all the cow's manure over that area, over this field where they would walk. And you want it to be a fairly big field because otherwise they just destroy the entire ground. And um, there are no flies or no in insects. Your chickens are inside the stable, so they will not spread out this manure. Um, they, they will break some of the ground, they will spread out this manure, there will be an overload of um, worms and all of that the, the next season and most of the value is actually disappearing. It doesn't have this effect in the winter time. You have the organic matter added to it from the actual cow patty but um, most of it, it actually leaks away uh, with rain, snow, what have you. So out of a economic perspective and we want to build topsoil we need compost both for the garden and we need topsoil for our pastures to just build the topsoil and and to to increase um, just the capacity in which it can hold moisture 
and hold new nutrients and then just be able to grow uh, we want that stuff and so if we had these guys out on pasture we would probably lose um, with this amount of cattle that we have now close to 20 tons of compost so what we want to do instead is um, have a deep bedding most modern farms here in Sweden um, when you talk about dairy farming especially they have these um, these floors in their stables that have these gaps in between where the manure and urine goes in and they basically just produce this liquid um, manure a mixture of the um, of the poop and the urine which I drive out on the fields and it smells and um, it leaks a lot of nitrogen and all of that it, it just leaks into the air a lot of it and we don't want that we want to build compost we want to build topsoil we want to bind this carbon and and layer it and put it down on the ground so we will go to deep bedding this is what farmers used to do and this is still beef farmers cattle farmers like that they a bunch of them still use it but there even there you can do a lot of things wrong the most common thing to put down into the deep bedding is um, straw which um, has not the best properties to bind up nitrogen because it's not not that high in carbon actually best thing is to have a very high variety of different uh, carbon materials you can even have some bedding hay you can have some uh, wood chips or some wood shavings some sawdust you can have some straw and basically that works as a diaper you want to catch <laughs> you want to catch the nitrogen phosphorus all that stuff inside of this um, carbon material you want to bind it and then you want to compost that produce compost produce topsoil put it out on the pasture so our stable will be made for that so the first thing that you have to think about when you build this stable is that you will um, have a ground level that will be three or sometimes even four or five feet taller at the end of the season so at the end of the winter season so you start out and and you start out with a with a foot 30 centimeters of bedding by the end of the year if you've done this the right way depending on how many cows you have how much space uh, you will be up you know to the belly button or chest of yourself um, with this deep bedding and um, you need to think of that so we had another spot here on the farm where we were thinking oh we might build it here but one, if we have that deep bedding go one meter high um, the, the cows would poke holes into the roof with their horns so the, the shot that I showed you earlier it really gives us this all this space and when they feel like they are closed in somewhere it'll not be good here I'll show you Lizzie a little bit there she is so that that is the first thing you want to think about um, the second thing that is really important if you have your cows only confined to one of these areas which two years ago that's what we did it is perfect from the um, view of being able to catch all catch all the manure but um, if you have them confined there um, you need to know that they always go on the soft bedding and that their hooves will grow very long so what you'll have to do is um, give them some space outside where they st still could walk and um, give them the opportunity um, I think one very smart thing that I've seen farmers do is give them some space outside and then uh, a part of that space outside is actually just a, a spot of rougher concrete um, where when the cows walk over there naturally by their own weight they actually wear down their hooves a bit now outside all summer long that that really happens naturally but when you have them on these softer deep beddings that's really a risk so also what you have to think about when you build this cow shelter is when this deep bedding rises up um, you need to be, have a spot where you feed them the the hay or winter feed that you have um, it needs to grow up with the deep bedding so um, you really have to have a system where ever you put the winter feed in it needs to be able to grow and and at the end of the season also that has to be elevated a meter higher compared to where it was in the fall 
Obviously it is very important that you build the stable so it's easily accessible for your tractor, front end loader or what you have, um, both to drive um, the winter feed there, um, once you harvest it or later no matter how your system is set up and also to um, drive out the compost later or to um, pile it up in there to let it compost if you don't use pigs to turn the deep bedding. So it's um, those kind of things that you need to think of the, the practical workflow obviously. Uh, another important aspect is that you build it so that the cows can get um, enough sunlight. If you are not able to give them any access to sunlight they are going to have sicknesses. Um, one thing for example that um, they can get sensitive towards if they don't have sunlight is ringworm. I was talking about the height of the stable want to talk about the depth of the stable. The depth is really important because um, all cows have a hierarchy in their, um, in their herd. Um, Highland cattle has a very strong hierarchy, maybe even it shows stronger than other herds. Um, I would say so at least. You need to have enough space that when a cow is eating and a, a, a cow, a younger cow or a cow lower in hierarchy needs to go behind that cow that there's enough space that if another cow is standing there that it can still fit through there and run away that it's not being cornered that it can still go around so um, for us we are limited in how deep we can build because we are using our own lumber and to keep it simple simple um, we are just going to use one length our wood miser band sawmill can only mill max um, 6.3 meters and I think the specific lumber we milled for this uh, a couple of years ago is actually only 5.3 meters long. So that is the maximum depth, but I would not want it to be any um, shorter. I want this depth so that the cows have this opportunity to really go around behind without being bullied and cornered. And then you obviously want to have enough space at the feeders that they can all um, stand there and and eat without pushing each other. You want them to have to put their heads through the feeders to get stuck a little bit so they don't um, push away the neighbor constantly so they don't back in and out of the feeders and spill all the good hay into the deep bedding. So those are things that we're thinking about. Um, in our case we only have to buy the foundations, the concrete and the roofing. All the other stuff we have. All the other things we have um, and we are right now actually looking into doing this project still this fall because we do not want to lose these 15 to 20 cubic meters of manure and compost so we will use wood chips also produced on our farm as the carbon material to capture this manure. Mm -hmm.